What's up, YouTube? This is your friendly neighborhood movie nerd back to give you guys everything that is going on in the world of movies and TV and people. It is official. I have now seen the best movie of the year. At least so far, Infinity War has not come out yet, but for right now, this is my review for my favorite movie of the year so far, Thoroughbreds. <laughs> What am I going to tell my dad? Wear a hat. We're keeping this, by the way. And by God, it took me forever to finally figure out that it's pronounced thoroughbreds, not thoroughbreds, which is how I was pronouncing it for this entire time. I suck at pronunciations. I can't help it. Thoroughbreds is directed and written by Corey Finley and stars Olivia Cook and Anya Taylor-Joy as Amanda and Lily, two polar opposite girls who develop a very strong, very strange, and very disturbing friendship. Amanda, on the one hand, is a sociopath who has no feelings or emotions about anything, whereas Lily is extremely emotional and feels everything, almost to a fault. And when Amanda points out that Lily despises her stepfather, Mark, played by Paul Sparks, the two of them come up with a plan to murder him, and their plan suckers in Tim, played by the recently passed Anton Yelchin, a high school dropout and wannabe drug dealer. With how most films we get now are starting to feel very much the same in nature, talk about a film that just blows the doors off of any conventions and manages to be one of the most different things out there. Corey Finley does an immaculate job placing this entire movie right on the perfect borderline between black comedy and horror and never once going too far in either direction. While the marketing of this movie does make it seem a tad bit more conventional than what the actual movie is, it still does a brilliant job of suckering people in so that the experience they end up getting is one unlike any other film experience this year. Performances here are easily some of the best of the year. Cook and Taylor Joy have some of the best chemistry ever put to film. And what makes their relationship great is really how dependent the two of them are on each other, even if they don't realize that at first. Because Amanda, despite being a sociopath who doesn't feel anything even remotely resembling an emotion, she still needs this bond with her friend because it really is the only connection that she's ever had in her life that, while not necessarily giving her that emotional resonance, it still makes her feel like a human being and not just like a thing. While Lily, on the other hand, who by all dictionary definitions is perfectly normal, is completely run by emotion, and it gets her to the point where it begins to cloud her judgment and even makes her seem more crazy than Amanda is, and the film does a really brilliant job of, while you are sympathizing with her the entire time, it also does a really good job of reminding you that she is not necessarily in the right, that she is in the wrong for hating her stepfather, because even though he may not be the best person, he still is supporting her to the best of her ability, and he still has given her a beautiful life and a beautiful home. It's a brilliant dichotomy. And the way the film bounces back and forth between the two, keeping the focus on one for one part and the other for the other part, it really is absolutely brilliant. Now, while Cook and Taylor Joy are the stars here and are responsible for all of the dark moments, this is still a dark comedy, and a lot of the levity comes from Anton Yelchin's involvement. Because after getting over the initial tug on the heartstrings at knowing that he's dead and that this is one of the last times I'll ever see this very talented kid who has gone way too soon on screen, almost all the gut-busting laugh moments from this movie come from this wannabe tough guy who gets in way over his head and just has no idea of the messed up shit that he's getting involved with. But what the film does brilliantly with him is that the character of Tim, despite the fact that he is portrayed as a guy who, despite he talks a big game, he really actually does have a lot of common sense and he does know when to call it quits, when the chips are stacked against him. And Yelton's performance helps makes this character just feel so naturally relatable because even though this guy was, what, 27, 28 when he filmed this, he still feels like somebody like a natural high school drop and he still feels so young. And it also helps that his involvement in the film is kind of like the equivalent of Lil Ra Howery's involvement in Get Out, where his character, while still a great character, is kind of the personification of the audience within the film. The story itself is very straightforward and doesn't necessarily have a whole lot of complexity to it, but that's not the focus here. It is on these characters. I've said in the past that the biggest problem that films seem to have is being able to juggle character versus story and how one always seems to suffer when the focus is on the other. Here, however, the juggle is perfectly even keeled because I'm so invested in where the story is going with all its dark twists and turns and it's the combination of these characters and the brilliant writing, cinematography, and score that keeps me locked in until the credits and fair warning the ending of this film is easily one of the most disturbing things ever put to screen this film was a completely different film experience so far this year and one that i am very glad i tuned in for this was the type of film that i was not expecting from the year of 2018 but i'm very very glad i got because this is the type of film that needs to be seen by everyone whether they be a casual film goer or a cinemaphile like myself because this is one of the few films out there that really does have something in it for everybody to love i'm giving this movie nine and a half out of ten stars so that is it that is my review for Thoroughbreds. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Be sure to click the like button and the subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter at Movie Nerd Review. Also, head on over to my website, MovieNerdReviews.com. That is it. I will see you guys next time. No!